Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Raspberry Pi Pico. And man, it was a good 2020 for the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and it's looking like it's going to be a good 2021. But before everybody gets excited, I do want to mention that this is not a new single board computer from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, like the Raspberry Pi 4, or the CM4, or even the Raspberry Pi Zero. This is what's known as a microcontroller. It'll handle analog inputs, low latency I.O., you can control LEDs with it, and this can all be programmed in C++ or MicroPython. And I think one of the best things that they have going for this microcontroller versus other ones is the documentation that the Pi Foundation has made available to the public day one of release. And the next best thing about this microcontroller is the cost, coming in at four US dollars. So in this video, we're gonna take a close look at the Pico Pi, we're gonna go over the specs, and then we're gonna run some demo code on this board that the Raspberry Pi Foundation has posted up on their website. Now, as it sits right now, I'm waiting on some more accessories to arrive for the Pico Pi because there's a lot of little projects that I wanna get out of the way including running some retro games on this microcontroller. And I know that I mentioned that this isn't a true single board computer like the Pi Zero or the Raspberry Pi, but that's really not stopping us from doing all kinds of crazy stuff with this Pico Pi. Now, before we jump right into it, I do want to give a big thank you to Micro Center for sending this over for review. They do have stock of these Pico Pies in their stores, so if you're in California, Colorado, Georgia, Illinois, Kansas, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, or Virginia, Definitely see if there's a store near you, and if there is, you can go ahead and pick up a Pico Pi today. And by the way, there's going to be a ton of accessories for this microcontroller in the future, and Micro Center does plan on carrying a lot of this stuff. So when it comes to the specs of this new microcontroller, it's actually powered by a RP2040 chip. This is a dual-core ARM Cortex-M0 Plus at 133 MHz, and I have seen people overclock this already, day one of release. 264 kilobytes of SD RAM, 2 megabytes of onboard QSPI flash, 26 multifunction GPIO pins, including three analog inputs, two UR interfaces, two SPI controllers, two I2C controllers, and 16 PWM channels. It's got a built-in accurate on-chip clock, a built-in temperature sensor, and this can operate anywhere from 1.8 volts up to 5.5 volts. Now you might have noticed that the Pico also has a micro USB interface and this will actually work in two different ways. We can set it up as a serial connection or mass storage. And using this in mass storage mode makes it super easy to get our finished code or our fully compiled projects over to the board itself. You can actually plug this directly into your PC, your Mac, your Linux machine, or even another Raspberry Pi and transfer your compiled project over there. And once the unit reboots, it'll automatically run that code for us. Now I just want to give you an idea of how small this microcontroller really is. On the left, we have the new Pico. On the right, we have the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which was a super small single board computer. Now taking a look at the Raspberry Pi 4 versus the Pico, I mean it absolutely dwarfs this little tiny board. Now the Raspberry Pi Pico is definitely an awesome little microcontroller and there's going to be a ton of accessories specifically designed for the Pico itself. As you can see here from Pi Maroney, they have this Pi Maroney Pico VGA demo board. It's got VGA out, audio out, and SD card support. They also have the Pico system, which is an upcoming little handheld based around the RP2040, which is the chip we're using in the Raspberry Pi Pico. That's the microcontroller piece to this whole puzzle. And when it comes to this chip, there will be more boards that have this same chip with different interfaces, like this one from SparkFun. They actually have a couple different ones that you can pre-order. And even Idafruit has integrated this into one of their Feather boards. All right, so let's go ahead and build and run one of their demos on this board. I'm using the Pi 400 to complete all of this. I'm going to go ahead and connect the Pico as mass storage device. So what I'm going to do is hold the boot cell button on the Pico itself and then plug in the micro USB cable that I also have plugged into the Raspberry Pi 400. It's going to show up as a mass storage device. And from here, there's a little HTML document that'll bring you right over to the Raspberry Pi website. Everything you ever needed or wanted to know about the Pico is on the website. They have tons of demos over here, how to set up the SDK, your runtime environment and everything like that. I've already got the SDK installed and set up on this Raspberry Pi 400 running Raspberry Pi OS. And along with the SDK, you can get the example. So we're going to go ahead and build one here. We're going to head over to the Pico directory. Under here, we'll have Pico examples. We also have a build section. This is where our compiled file will be located once we build it. So I'm going to open up terminal. We're going to CD into that Pico directory. Then we need to CD into the Pico examples. 
then Pico Builds. And I'm going to be building and testing out the Blink demo. Once we have it all compiled and place it on the Raspberry Pi Pico, the LED on the Pico is just going to blink every one second. It's a simple demo. It's easy to use. It's easy to compile. It's building it right now, and it's going to place it in my build folder. Now that it's done, I can go ahead and close down Terminal. And I'm going to head back over to my Pico build folder, which is located under Pico, Pico Examples, Build. We'll go to that Blink directory, which we built it in. And here it is, the UF2 file. So in order to use a UF2 file on the Pico, all we need to do is drag and drop it when it's hooked up as external storage. So it's now on there, and it automatically detected it. And the LED on the Pico is now blinking. Every one second, we'll get a blink. And as you can see, this is just a very simple example on how to program the Raspberry Pi Pico. There's tons of examples in here, and I would definitely recommend going through each one of them. But like I mentioned, I do have a lot planned for this little board, but I'm waiting on some accessories to ship in. Hopefully they get here in the next few days, and if so, I can make a couple more videos. But one thing that I'm really excited about with this is running retro games on the super low-powered microcontroller. We're definitely not going to be able to run the things that the Raspberry Pi 4 can, but to see this microcontroller put out a VGA signal and at least emulate something really old is pretty spectacular in my opinion. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Just wanted to give you a quick look at the new Raspberry Pi Pico. If there's anything you want to see programmed or running on this unit, just let me know in the comments below. But definitely keep an eye out on the channel because I have a lot more planned. But like always, thanks for watching.